Hi, okay, let's take a look at the back of the Nord Stage 3. Let's zoom in so we can see what's going on here. Okay, starting on the right, this is the monitor in. And what that allows you to do is you can take a eighth inch jack from a smartphone or from a computer, plug that in, and that will pump the sound from that device into the Nord 3, and at which point you can listen to the sound while playing the Nord 3. So it's a great way of rehearsing, it's a great way of playing by ear, or if you wanna work out a solo against a certain piece, that's where the monitor in comes in. Just a little tip too for any of you who, probably a lot of you know this, but maybe some of you don't, whenever you see two separating lines on an audio cable, that means it's stereo. Which brings me to my next topic, the headphones. Headphones is, are gonna use a quarter inch jack, but it is a stereo output. So you're gonna need an adapter like this. This is a quarter, this is an eighth inch to a quarter inch adapter for the headphones. I'm gonna put that there. Some headphones actually come with a quarter inch. It depends, but bottom line is that's what you'll need for the headphones. And then you have audio left and right here, or you know, one and two. And that is gonna be the most common situation, your quarter inch out. So the Nord Stage 3, by default, before you play with any of the settings, the audio will simultaneously come out of these three channels. That's how it works. Um, these two channels, it doesn't necessarily come out of until you play with the, the settings on the, on the menus within the keyboard itself, which we'll most likely have another video on to talk about that in detail. Why do you have four outputs? Well, first of all, when you're on a gig situation, and most times, uh, this is the year 2017, I think for the most part, most people, most bands will play with a PA system and they're, at, they're gonna ask for one audio cable out from the keyboardist. Uh, ideally, you want two because once you get that stereo sound, it really layers it and it makes a huge difference in the sound, which is why a lot of times it sounds so much better through headphones than it does when you're actually at the gig. And a lot of the reason it sounds so, so, uh, much different at the gig and potentially a lot worse is because you're not using left and right and you're not getting that stereo separation to really make that wide sound that the keyboard is so good at doing out of the box. Okay, so you could technically pump your piano through sound one and two or channel one and two and then you could pump, uh, let's say your synth or the organ patch uh, section of the keyboard out of this. You can also separate it by the layers or the panel of the keyboard. So the, this keyboard has two panels you can play two sounds, sound banks at the same time. I'm not explaining that 100% correctly here, but we will in a future video. Bottom line is you can have up to four outputs and you can separate those in a number of ways. And it just gives you more flexibility both at the gig or in the studio if you wanna separate those and give different EQs for each output. Okay, sustain pedal, by far the most popular thing I think for when you are working with electronic keyboards is the sustain pedal. And my keyboard, uh, this is the Nord Stage 3 76 key. I, I received a Nord sustain pedal with mine, and it looks like that. It's pretty lightweight, but it's, it's, uh, it's got nice rubber feet on it so that it doesn't move uh, too much. Actually, it doesn't move too much unless you're really on a slick surface. So that's the Nord sustain pedal, and that's also gonna be quarter inch. And let's zoom in on that, and Let's take a look at this. This has the one black line separator. Although it's not an audio cable, if it was an audio cable, like this one, you can see that that's not a stereo audio cable. That's just a regular mono audio cable, which is why you need two left and right. Okay, let's put the sustain pedal in there. Okay, then you have a control pedal, which is another pedal that will allow you to, you know, adjust volume. It's, it's programmable. So you have a lot of op options with the control pedal and all those options can be done within the system menu here in the keyboard. Then you have an organ swell option. So uh, that has a whole set of features too, which is primarily focused on volume and presence of the pipe organ or any organ for that matter. But these are all very flexible functions. And the reason they give you both is because you might wanna have this do control, let's say LFO or some other attribute and then the organ swell will control volume then you have your sustain pedal to, to open those notes when you're playing the piano so there's those three options and if that weren't enough let's go over here and see some of the other options this connector is used at the nord factory when they calibrate the key beds and store the calibration data for each unit it cannot be used for anything other than that you've got the midi in and the midi out crucial 
for any keyboard these days is to have a MIDI in and a MIDI out. In the old days, they used to have a MIDI through, but um, I've seen they've, they've done away with MIDI through on a lot of keyboards, probably because it's not as needed as much uh, now that keyboards are also USB compatible. Uh, why I'm using this MIDI in, I'm actually connecting this MIDI in uh, from the MIDI out on that guy that you can see there under the headphones. That is the Boss RC505 loop station. And what I use with the MIDI, and we'll have a whole other video on that in the future, I, I sync the actual MIDI time clock. So if I'm doing 120 beats per minute on my looper, uh, that will push that time clock to the Nord and sync up everything that the Nord clock responds to, such as digital delay, arpeggiator, LFO, things like that. So that's crucial. So if I were to change it from 120 to 125, the Nord would follow suit. It would also change its tempo. So that's where the MIDI in is used in this situation. Obviously the most common use of MIDI in and out is like if you wanted to use the Nord as a control keyboard, and to control other keyboards, you'd simply take the MIDI out and put it into the MIDI in and the other keyboard. Okay, then you have, to the left of that, you have a rotor pedal. So that would be a pedal that would uh, control the rotary pedal settings on the Nord. Most likely the speed is what you'd use that for. And then here is a traditional USB. And you can see they're using sort of the older style USB. I know there's an official name for that, but I don't have it memorized at the moment. But the USB, and then a common misnomer is that, oh, well, it has a USB. Maybe the sound will come out of the USB. Uh-uh. No sound comes out of the USB on this particular device. Whereas on the looper station, the USB can transfer data or sound. And on many mixing boards, USB can transfer sound as well, or audio. But not on the Nord. This is simply for data. So the USB on the Nord is going to be used to transfer uh, patches. If you want to program a sample and record a sample or have a recorded sample you download from the internet and you want to put that sample in the Nord, the USB would be used for that. It can store all the settings of your keyboard so you can have a complete backup of the entire profile, both the settings and the sounds from the Nord. Uh, or if you just want to change out piano sounds, you can download the latest piano sound and put that on the Nord as well. Uh, which, which is great because then you can update your keyboard and have it always refreshed. And then finally over here we have the program up-down pedal. So that's more like a on again, off again, or zero or one. That kind of pedal would allow you to switch uh, patches up or down. All right, finally we'll uh, take the camera over here and look at the rest of the keyboard. At least in the back, there's not much left here. We have get some light. We have the power button, which is recessed, which is nice. And then of course a standard traditional power plug. So that's essentially it. The rest is just nice labeling. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the deep exploration of the backside of the Nord 3. More videos to come. Stay tuned. Thanks.